Okay, here we go. We're gonna do a spunky little practice. <laughs> We're gonna actually just start right here in a down dog. Spread your palms wide. Bend your knees a lot. Lift your hips up high. Anchor through your hands. Yeah, and with the knees bent, it's gonna allow you to really lift your hips up and get out of the shoulders. So you can plug down through the digits of your hands. I like to really focus on spreading the toes, drawing the belly in a little, there's a lift of the rib cage, and then just let your head be free. And you may or may not practice with your legs, you know, bent or straight throughout the practice. Connect to your breath. And if it's too much, you can always drop to a child's pose, reset for a moment. But we're gonna make this an active flow. So we're just gonna keep it moving. See if you can start to lengthen the back side of the body a little bit, maybe melt the heels a little bit closer down. Roll forward to plank. Stack the body accordingly to your body's position from down dog to plank. Move your eyes just a little forward to the front edge of the mat. Pull your navel in and up and breathe your chest through your body. And at any given point, you can drop your knees to the floor and support this. This is really important to support if you feel like you need that hold. Inhale your breath, exhale, sustain. Plug down a little more, lengthen a little bit more and move your weight just a tad more forward onto the balls of your toes. Let your breath flow. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Your hands and feet most likely have found their place at this point. And if not, sometimes it takes a little. Roll forward plank position. Stack your body. Let your chest move a little forward. Good, fix your eyes on one spot. Bend your elbows in half to your version of chaturanga. I've been taking these micro push-ups. You can drop your knees. You can also just hold plank. Restraighten your arms to a plank position. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Do what you can. Roll forward to a plank. Bend your elbows the appropriate amount, chaturanga. Lead with your heart and chest for your first upward facing or baby cobra, depending on you. Keep your arms straight, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Continue to let the breath just flow. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose. Drop to your knees for a tabletop position. Walk your knees in just like a tiny bit, an inch. Curl the toes into the mat. Anchor the hands. Fix your eyes on one spot. So from here, just float your right leg up and back. So it's floated from the ground. Like you're in warrior three. Float your left arm forward. So you're hovering in space here. Simple movement that sometimes makes you feel like you're a little wobbly, unstable, that is the point. So just plug down and breathe your left arm more forward, flex your right foot really strong and reach in opposite directions. Reach back with your left arm like you're swimming. Keep your eyes fixed if you can. Bend at your right knee crease and pause. And this be, may be where you stop today. If you feel like reaching your hand to your ankle kind of takes you out of alignment, just pause and be happy with this or move on and catch your hand into your ankle. The firing of your right thigh is up towards the sky. Your chest is faced towards the ground. You're plugging your right hand firm into the mat. And you're continuing your flow of breath. Reach and stretch your right leg and your left arm in opposite directions. Replace the left hand and the right knee down. I like to do this with curls, curled toes. Float your left leg up and back. So just float it up, hip height, pause. Draw your navel in. Reach your right arm forward. So you're reaching and stretching in opposite directions. Fire up the muscles around the quadricep. Reach like you're shaking someone's hand. Reach the right arm straight back, pause. Bend at your knee crease, pause again. 
be happy with this or catch your hand to your ankle if you have that motion. The firing of the thigh up and back and definitely an opening of the chest, but you don't wanna feel like you're gonna topsy turn to the right or to the left. You're stable. Kick up and kick back. Continue to let the breath flow as you plug down. Reach and stretch in opposite directions, create more space for yourself. Hand and knee to the floor. Once again, curl the toes, walk the hands out an inch to do that. Hips up and back, down dog. And then revisit from down dog to plank once again. Bend your elbows in half to a chaturanga. Drag yourself through a smooth up dog if you're taking those or baby cobra. The hands and the feet are firm. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Glide your right foot forward into a low lunge and pause. Yeah. Activate your back leg. No, you can always drop your back knee. Grip your right hip in strong. Reach your arms back like a set of airplane wings and hover. You're almost resting your stomach on your thigh, but you're actually hovering in space. So you're required to use abdominal muscles. Scissor the inner and outer thighs together. Feel the shoulder blades kind of lift up off the body. Anchor through your feet and your legs. And then with this motion, sweep your arms out and up or straight up. Crescent lunge, high lunge. Hip points move forward, bending deep into the front right thigh, activating the back left leg. Get a little heavier in the lower half of the body so the upper half of the body starts to work its way up. It's almost like you're crawling your upper body up towards the sky. Look up a little if you can. Hands to frame the front foot, pause. Keep your right foot as it is. Turn your back foot strong. Set your feet up for warrior one, pause low and reach your arms back and hover again. Steering of your right hip underneath you, activation of your back left leg, quadricep engages and the back foot presses firm. Sweep, sweep out and up, crab, warrior one. Steer your right hip underneath you, swing your left ribs a little bit more forward, anchor firmly through your feet, Grow the posture from the ground up and look up a little with your eyes. Beginning part of the practice, we might feel a little like we're rushing to the next thing. Just be patient and be present here. Hands to the floor, plank position. Pausing your plank, lower halfway down to your version of chaturanga. I'm taking these baby push-ups. Pull yourself to an up dog if you're exploring that today. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Remind yourself that your flows, your vinyasa flows, anything goes. Land your left foot forward, low lunge and pause. Be on your fingertips, activate from the ground up. Steer and hug your left hip in strong, reach your arms back, pause. Hovering over your front left thigh. The connection to your body and breath is what this flow is all about. Sweep your arms out and up or straight up, depending on you. Hip points move forward, get heavy in your front left thigh. Activate the muscles around your back right kneecap and work it out here. Hands frame your front foot, pause. Left foot stays, right foot turns on a strong angle is ideal. Grip the left hip in, anchor the right leg, arms reach back once again. Pause in this, in this setup here because your right side of your body needs to come a little bit more forward. Sweep out and up, warrior one. Sometimes it gives you the opportunity to even slide your left foot a little bit more forward. And you get a little bit of a longer step. Sometimes back is sensitive, you need a shorter step. it a little deeper. Hands to frame your front foot. Step to a plank. Halfway to your version of your push-up. Slide yourself through an up dog. Smooth sailing here. Hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Look where you want to go. Step your feet. One, two. Top of that. Feet can have a little separation. Long spine. Weight is forward. Exhale. Fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag your hands to prayer at heart and stand for a moment. Decide if you wanna practice with your feet together or slight separation, it's up to you. 
Arms reach up nice and big, look up with your eyes. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips or hands to your shins, fold again. Root to rise, come all the way up. Hands to prayer at heart, drop your arms. Just like this, arms reach up, anchor. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips, prepare. Exhale, fold again. Root to rise, anchor. Hands to prayer at heart, arms by side body. Arms reach up, dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips, prepare. Exhale, fold again, let the head go. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag your hands to prayer at heart, drop your arms. Feet together a little separated, find chair, weight in your heels. So nothing wrong with taking chair with your arms up, your arms bent like cactus arms. Your hands can even slide to your hips. You can encourage your thighs to move down and back, weight in your heels. Just finding what works for you as you get a little heavier in the lower half of the body and create this little up dog in your chest so your neck is free and there's no pressure on the spine. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, however that looks for you. Long spine to prepare, step or float. I've kind of ditched that floating, chaturanga or skip it, up dog. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Land your right foot forward, turn your back foot strong, warrior one. Hands come down when you are ready to your vinyasa. And your vinyasa could just be a down dog and you can just pause. Left foot lands, back foot turns, warrior one. Back down we go through your version of vinyasa. Upward facing should feel good, not jamming into the lower back, downward facing where we reset. Let the head be free. Look where you wanna go, step or float your feet lightly to the top. Long spine to prepare, exhale, fold in half. Sit deep into your version of chair pose. Arms can be out a little wider too. Press up to stand up, drag your hands to prayer. Drop your arms, here we go again. Chair from the top. Weights in your heels. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine to prepare, step or float through your vinyasa. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns, warrior one. Take your time, it's not sloppy, it's safe. Back down we go. Move how you wish. When you get to your down dog, land your left foot forward. Turn your back foot strong. Warrior one, back down we go. Through a vinyasa, meet me in a down dog. Stay with your breath. Plug your thumbs down, your index fingers and your baby fingers. Keep your arms straight. Look where you wanna go, step or float to the top. Long spine to prepare, exhale, fold again. Sit deep into chair. Press up to stand up, drag your hands to prayer, drop your arms. Again, chair pose, top of the mat. Stick your butt back. Dive over those bent legs, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine on the inhale, step or float through your vinyasa. So at this point, it's about just keeping it moving, getting our bodies warm. From your down dog, land your right foot forward. Back foot turns, warrior one. Back down we go, through a vinyasa. Slide your left foot forward, turn the back foot strong. Warrior one, back down we go, through a vinyasa, upward facing, hips up and back, downward facing. We're gonna do one more. I know you probably don't want to, but it's good for you. Look where you wanna go, step or float to the top. Long spine prepares you. Exhale, we fold. Sit again into a chair. Keep the breath flowing. 
Press up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Here we go, chair pose from the top. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head be free. Long spine prepares you, step or float through vinyasa. Up dog, smooth, hips up and back, down dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns, warrior one. Back down we go. You're welcome to step to a dog. That's what I'm showing here. And then when you're ready, the left foot lands, the back foot turns, warrior one. Building some heat outside here today. Hands come back down through vinyasa. Upward facing dog, point your toes. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. From your down dog, keep this moving guys. Step your right foot forward, turn your back foot strong and circle open warrior two. Look down at your feet, make sure your feet aren't all over the place. Your right foot and your left arch on the same plane of energy. Breathe your left shoulder blade open. I'm gonna look straight out. Yeah, it's a good dristy point. It's a good focal point, lengthen your tailbone. Wrap your right thigh open and anchor strong through your left leg. So feel your feet on the floor, they've got you. Breathe your chest nice and open. Keep the shape of the lower half of the body. Rest your right arm softly on the top of your right thigh. Reach your left arm straight up or up and forward. If you're moving up and forward towards the front edge of the mat, turn from your shoulder blade. Grip your right hip in strong. Turn your bottom right ribs up towards the sky. So you're moving the ribs up. Lead with the top arm, pull up warrior two. Try to take the bounce out. Flip your right palm, reverse your warrior. Not a back bend, a side body opener. You're not jamming into your lower back. Straighten your right leg on track. Maybe keep a micro bend. Float your right hand to your right shin. Left arm extends up towards the sky. You can use a block, slide it to the outside of the right calf. You're welcome to tighten your stance if you need to. Grip the hips in, feel the length of your side body. Stack the two shoulders on top of one another if possible. Look up. Look to the floor, circle the hands down, move through a vinyasa. You're welcome just to go right back to a down dog. From your downward facing dog, step your left foot smack in between your hands, turn the back foot strong, cartwheel open warrior two. So we're not taking like a super long hold, but I want it to be long enough that you feel because we're gonna move through this flow a few times. Breathe your right shoulder back, use the strength of your body equally. Right, so if you feel like you're lunging all the way forward or all the way back, find the happy medium. Get a little heavier in the lower half of the body so the side body lifts. Don't hold your breath. Keep the shape of the lower half of the body. Press firm through your right leg. Rest your left arm softly on the top of the thigh. That's a key part of this. Grip your left hip in strong. Top arm can reach straight up or it can come up and over. It just depends on you and how this feels. Bottom left ribs turn with you. So you get a little bit of this chest opener. Lead with your top arm without any bounce, warrior two. Flip your palm, reverse your warrior without your left knee buckling in without your lower back kind of singeing on you. You want to find that sweet spot. Straighten your left leg. Hey, don't go pin straight. Keep a little bend behind it. You're in reverse trikonasana. Float your left hand towards your left shin or slide a block underneath your hand. Stack the two arms, grip the inner thighs together. Lift from the waist and the side by that's, gonna have, that's how you're going to keep yourself out of your low back. And then see if you can look up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Look to the floor, circle the hands down, vinyasa or not, you pick. From your down dog, we do it again. Right foot lands, back foot turns. Warrior two, we cartwheel open. 
Rest your arm on the top of your thigh, modified extended side angle. Pull up to a warrior two, pause. Flip your palm, reverse your warrior. Straighten your right leg the appropriate, appropriate amount for you. Reverse Trikonasana. Float your right hand to your right shin. Triangle pose. Look to the floor, bring it down and move how you wish. When you get to your down dog, step your left foot forward, turn your back foot strong, cartwheel open, warrior two. So it's like not so fast, but it's not so slow, right? Rest your arm on the top of your thigh, modified extending. You wanna feel what you're doing. Otherwise there's no point in doing it. Pull up to a warrior two. Flip the palm, reverse softly and lightly. Straighten your left leg the appropriate, appropriate amount. Float your hand to your shin, Trikonasana Triangle. Feel your feet plug down. Look to the floor, take it down. Chaturanga, upward facing point. Hips up and back, downward facing. We're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna add on, okay? Right foot lands, back foot turns. Cartwheel open, warrior two. Be patient with yourself. Get out of your own headspace. Rest your arm on the top of the thigh or slide, slide your hand all the way down on the inside. So you can decide what you want here or the outside. Find one that works. We're gonna hold it a few extra breaths though, because if we're gonna go down, you might as well have an experience. Grip your right hip in strong. You can do anything you want with your top left arm. I'm gonna just have mine going straight up today. Hand can slide to your hip. You could wrap it around for a half bind. Just create some space and hip opening here. Breathe your chest open. Anchor strong through your feet and your legs. Pull on up to a warrior two. Do your best. Reverse the warrior. Straighten your right leg on track. Don't go pin straight. Find a sweet spot. Float your hand to your shin for a trikonasana. You can just move the block if you need it to the outside of the calf. I'm just pausing in the kind of like key postures a little bit longer, yeah. There's a sensation of leaning back, but you're not at all going into your low back, yeah. So get yourself grounded, look down. Your hand can stay up or come to your hip. You're gonna pop up into a half moon here. Do it slow, really focus on your right foot, gripping your right hip and strong, and find what works as far as the height of the block, right? Some of us like it super high, some of us need it medium or low. Left arm can extend up. Soften behind the right knee and just work on the basic alignment today, really breathing the side body open. If you're dying for a chopasana, which is catching the foot, you grab and you kick behind you. That is the back bend, or you just stay. Find lightness, find patience, find focus, find breath. But if you grabbed your foot, release the foot, meet us back in a traditional half moon. Focus strong on your right foot, make sure it stays forward, the hip grips in, step back to a triangle pose, do it slow. It has to be a lift of your core to hold you up here. Look to the floor, lean onto your left hand as you come down for a Vashi Stas in the side plank. I'll show you a demo, a version that's uh, modified, so yes. The knee is down, the top leg is lifted. My hand is actually tented. You're welcome to do a full version of side plank Vashisasana. Two feet can stack on top, two feet can be aligned so one is in front of the other. Anything goes, you can drop down to your forearm. The goal is to create alignment. There's a lift of your bottom hip. The two hips line up nicely on top of one another. Lift a little higher, stay with your breath. Look down, plank position, move through a vinyasa or skip. If you're just more into chill today, do a little less. When you get to your downward facing dog, land your left foot forward, turn your back foot strong, come on up to a warrior two. 
Take a second to rearrange it, work it out. Good, rest your arm on the top of your thigh or maybe you made that decision to go down a little deeper. I'm gonna to go to the inside of the foot today. You can go outside of the foot. Right arm can reach up, grip the hip in strong. You can stay in the variation we've been practicing, anchor the right leg. Your right arm can be reaching up or it can come to your hip or you can wrap it behind you. Get a little heavier in your legs here so you can get that hip to open a little more. Snuggle your left hip in. It has a tendency to want to wing out on us. Do your best work, your best effort to do that. Stay with it. Couple more. Strong foot through your legs and your feet. Come on up, warrior two. You got this. Flip the palm, reverse your warrior. Straighten your left leg to the appropriate amount here. Float your left hand towards your left shin. If you need to utilize the block, I recommend bring it to the outside of the calf for this version. Back leg is super strong. Front leg is a micro bend behind it. Arms are stacked nicely if possible. You're able to breathe into your body here. If you can't breathe, you've gone too far. Focus strong on your left foot, your left hip. Keep that energy forward, moving forward like Tadasana. Reach down and see if you can move seamlessly into your version of half moon. First, take the regular variation. Yeah, it's good to check in. Grip that left hip in strong. The left foot likes to turn. Stack the two hips, the two shoulders. And if there's something fancy you want to add in, a chopasana balance. Now is the time. Keep gripping that left hip in. Feel the side of your body lengthen and engage. Breathe your top arm open more. If you added anything fancy, just meet us back in a regular half moon here. So the transition needs to be really slow and deliberate. Look down and step back, triangle the best that you can. Look to the floor, circle the right hand down and find your way into your version of side plank. I'm gonna go with the right leg bent. The right hand is directly underneath the shoulder, a little forward, and I'm gonna stack my hips this way. Bashi stas in a side plank traditional way is there for you if you want to take it. Lift from your bottom hip. Drop to your form if this doesn't feel great in the neck of the shoulders. Make the practice work. Take another big breath in. Stay with it. Look down. Move through a vinyasa or simply just reset in your downward facing dog. Take a big breath in. Take a full breath out. Walk your hands back to your feet. Yeah. Hands come to your hips, come halfway up, come the rest of the way up. And just stand for a second in this mountain pose, Tadasana, just feel. So I'm starting with my feet a little separated. I just find a little more balance. Bend the right leg up into a tree pose. Now tree traditional is to have the foot as high up to the inner thigh as possible, but by all means, you can have your foot down low too. Find tree and center yourself, hands to a prayer. Grip the hips in like we've been practicing in the last couple poses. And then once you get your balance, your focus, see if you wanna grow your branches. Maybe your arms work up. Maybe your hands need to stay in prayer. Maybe you want to clasp your hands over the top of the head today. Maybe look up a little with your eyes. Stay with it. Good, if your hands clasp, just separate them to the shoulder width distance. Keep lifting through your waist, anchor through your left leg and begin to lift your right foot away so it's hovering. So you're just creating kind of this floating tree pose. 
let the right foot look like get real soft down towards the ground, but keep the hips the same position. Keep lifting your upper body, begin to swing your right leg forward and flex your right foot strong. Good, stay with this or reach down and grab the outer blade of your foot and kick your left leg, right leg forward, excuse me, and your right arm back. So I'm gonna show the modification It's a bent leg, hand to the outside of that right thigh and the right arm reaches back. So we're take, going right into a dancing Shiva here, yeah. So we did that nice warm up to set up for this. Lift from your waist, from your chest and breathe your right arm back. Good, you wanna stay out of the lower back, grip your hips in strong and lengthen from the crown of the head all the way up towards the sky, stay with it. Pull around to center, keep the lift of the leg, bent or straight, it's up to you, work your core as much as you want. Keep lifting the upper body, lower the right foot to meet the left, sit deep into a chair. Slide your hands to a prayer. Inhale the breath, hook the elbow, go to the right. So we're just staying going the same direction. If something is sensitive in your body, you're welcome to stay up a little high and just air twist. If not, you're getting in there. The feet, the knees, the shins, everything stay lined up. Seat moves back, weight is in your heels. You're welcome to open up your arms, get in there a little bit more. Keep the breath flowing, maybe look up. Anchor strong through your legs, pull around to a committed chair, call the committed chair. Press up to stand up, drag it to prayer at heart, drop your arms and pause. Separate your feet hips with distance, I find it a little better with the balance. Reach down, grab your left leg and set up tree pose. Grip your right hip in. Hands come to a prayer at heart, Solid foundation here is what we're going for. So hands can be in prayer, hands can be at hips. Maybe you grow the branches of your tree today. Maybe your arms go up and you can flip the palms open. Yeah, nice work. Fix your eyes on something that's not moving. and anticipate the fallout, it's always there. You just come back if you do. If you flipped your palms inside out, just separate them so the shoulder width distance are roughly like that. Keep reaching up, don't let that go. Float the left foot away from the right thigh, just a little bit, let the foot go real soft. So you're just creating the shape of a tree and keeping your hips in the exact same position. Hug your hips in really, really strong, keep lifting up. Now keep all that and begin to swing your left leg forward without the left leg moving down. It's staying aligned. Flex the foot. Moving on to your version of dancing Shiva. Hand simply just reaches to the outside of the left thigh where you're welcome to reach down, grab the outer blade of your foot and kick the leg forward and through with your left arm back. It's up to you. Keep standing up tall. Breathe your left arm back. Keep your hip points moving forward and ground down through the standing right leg, the quadricep and energize to the crown of your head. A little bit more, stay with it. Good, keep the lift, pull around to center, arms up, leg up, leg up or leg straight, straight forward. Keep lifting, lift a little higher, keep that and then lower your left foot. Sit deep, chair, hands to prayer, inhale the breath, hook the elbow, take it to the left. Once again, alignment is everything. So upright and not hooking, totally fine. Getting in there, it's gonna get a little more dirty, totally okay. Weight in your heels. Move your chest from right to left. Yes, move the weight into your heels. Open up your arms if you want more. Keep your neck nice and neutral if something's going on and breathe. Get in there, last two. Strong legs, chair pose. Press up to stand up, hands to prayer, drop your arms. Separate your feet, hips with distance. A little something different here today. Let's try it out. It may or may not work. Keep the left leg where it is and step your right foot forward. 
about three feet. Yeah, walk it a little to the right. Good, hands to your hips. Right hand on your hip, left arm extends up. Inhale that breath, come halfway down and pause. Steer your hips back, like give your right hip a little energy with your right hand, like move your hip back. Keep reaching out, the anchor comes from the back leg. Hand could just be on the front shin if your block isn't nearby or you don't have one. Look to the right and then begin to twist. Maybe the right arm lifts up and stacks. So we're twisting triangle. We worked from the back of the mat today. You got it. Steer the hips. The waist is lifted. The spine is moving forward. And you're energetically pressing firm into the ground. Good, stay here if you'd like to add on with me, look down, left hand's gonna come to the block or the floor. You're gonna pop your left leg up into a revolved Ardha Chandrasana. Don't open your hip. We practice tabletop position early in the practice. You could feel what the body needs to be like here. Look to the right. If you'd like to bind in this, we practiced before, bend at your knee crease, reach with your right hand and see if you can get hold of your foot. It may or may not work for you today. Stay with it. Twist a little deeper. Good, let go of your foot if you took a bind. Look to the floor. Right hand comes down, giant step back into a low lunge. Yeah, if you found yourself kind of like you worked off the mat, that's okay. So we were here early on in the practice. Grip the hips in strong. Yeah, fire up from your feet up and then rise crescent lunge. Drag your hands to a prayer at heart. Inhale that breath, hook the elbow and take the twist. Stay upright if you're, if you're feeling a little tight in the low back, upper back, middle back. Activate your legs really strong and get in there. Good, twist open, grip the hips in. Open up your arms if you want a little more action or just stay as you are, last few breaths. There's a leaning back so the crown of the head lines up with your back left leg and a strong activation of your back left leg. One more big breath in. Good, look to the floor, place both hands down, move through a vinyasa. You only need it upward facing, point your toes hips up and back, downward facing dog. In your down dog, one more time, walk your hands back to your feet, slide your hands to your hips, come halfway up, come the rest of the way up. Good, keep your right leg where it is and step your left foot forward. Steer the hips forward, walk the left foot a little to the left if you need it. Right arm extends up, reach up out of your waist, anchor the back leg, come halfway down, pause, this gives you the idea, like what's happening. Maybe your left hip needs to move back more. Then the right hand can come down to the shin or to a block. It's up to you. If you're using the block, the inside. Hand to the flat part of your back, begin to look left. Grip the hips in strong and then move into your version of twisting triangle. So there's something for everybody here to work on. As you breathe your chest open, there's a lot of activation through your legs. Steer your hips back, activate your legs, look to the left. Stay with it. Keep pressing strong through your feet and your legs as you twist a little more. This may be where you stay, that's fine. If you'd like to add on the revolved Arda, move the block underneath the right shoulder. Keep your hand on the flat part of your back, pop the back leg up, Peel the left arm open if you're moving on. Lift from your inner thigh. There's a strong engagement of your core and your waist. Twist open. So what starts to happen as we fatigue here is we forget about our left hip in this pose and we let our right leg drop. Add in the bind if you added it on the other side or just stay as I'm demonstrating here. A few more breaths. Continue to breathe and just feel the effects of the pose. If you added the bind, let that go. 
look down for a moment, both hands come down, and then you take a giant step back. Yeah, I needed to rearrange my feet a little bit, and that's okay. Grip the hips in strong, anchor, and then rise, crescent lunge. So it's just yoga. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes we need to kind of maneuver a little. Hands to prayer. Inhale that breath. Lean out, hook, and get in there. Yeah. There's a leaning back, so the crown of the head lines up with your back leg. Yeah. You can always drop your back knee. Grip that left hip in strong and twist open here. Stay with it. Get a little heavier in your legs as you twist. Two more. Look down, plank position, pause in plank. Lead with your chest, lower halfway, chaturanga. Pull yourself through a smooth up dog, point your toes. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Glide your right knee forward for a half pigeon after doing all that, this should feel pretty good. Not a super long hold today, so just get to the posture and melt. Steer the left thigh down and the top of the left foot on the ground. That kind of gives you an idea if your pose is set up correctly. Pull your chest up, okay? Let's do this. Lean onto the right side, swing the left leg around. So it's gonna look like this. So the right leg is bent, it's in close to you and your left leg is bent in front of it. So your right leg is kind of on an angle and your left heel is in front of your right shin foot area. Good. Sit up nice and tall like this, hug the knee in and really focus on your alignment. So a lot of times we get to poses like this and we just slouch. So think less is more. Mm -hmm. Good, now take your right hand and place it right behind you. So it's gonna keep you upright. You're gonna grab your big left toe and extend the leg out. Now, if this is unavailable, just grab somewhere on the leg or even use a strap to keep you up. Now, you notice that all your weight starts to go back. We don't exactly want that. Stay upright and draw your belly in. So breathe into the hamstring here as you extend that left leg forward and you keep your chest up and forward. Good, now you're gonna switch the grips. So the hand's gonna to come to the outside of the foot or the outside of the leg and the left hand comes behind you, keeping that hand close to the base of the spine so there's no leaning back. Yeah, and look a little to the left. Perfect. Pull around to center. You're gonna keep your leg lifted and bring your arms forward. Draw your belly in, flex your palms, hold for five, for four, don't lean back, lift through your core, for three, for two, and one, release. The foot's gonna come down, you're just gonna separate like you're setting up for a little tree right here. Right hand's gonna come behind you for sail pose. Inhale the breath, exhale, lift up and back. So ideally you wanna get your left foot flat, but just do what you can. Lift a little higher. Exhale, your breath come out with control. As you lower down, lower down slowly. There's no easy way to get out. So just step back to a down dog. Let's just do that. If you need to move through a vinyasa, do that to just move your energy. And then meet me in a down dog. And then from here, we'll glide the left knee forward into a half pigeon. And not a super long hold. So just get yourself in and melt. Right thigh, right foot should be down on the ground.
two more breaths. Good, use the strength of your body, start to come up. Good, lean onto the left side and swing your right leg forward. So kind of hug your left leg in so it's a little closer to you and then bend your right foot so it's in front of you. So it looks like this and start by just grabbing the knee. So if something's going on in your body and you're like, I don't like what she's teaching, I don't wanna do it. Just stay here because this is keeping you engaged and you're still working your body, okay? Both butt cheeks stay down. Left hand comes behind you, like you're setting up for a spine twist. It's close to you with your fingers facing the back of the mat. Go ahead and reach down, grab your big toe. This may or may not work for you. You may be kind of stuck here too, but stay upright. And then if you can start to straighten out your leg, give it your best shot, but stay upright. Use your core muscles rather than going into your lower back and get out of your own way a little. Breathe your chest forward and breathe into the back side of your right leg. Keep the lift of the leg and switch the grip. If you can grab the outside of the foot, that's ideal, or use a strap, or keep the knee bent. Hand is still close to you, so you don't go backwards. Inhale the breath, lengthen up. Exhale, breathe into the hamstring and the IT band as you twist. Come around to center. Straighten yourself out first. Let go of the grip and reach your arms forward. Now I automatically went back. So I'm gonna train myself to lift up and then flex my palm. Just by flexing the hands, that's gonna draw me a little more forward. Keep lifting the leg, keep lifting the leg, keep lifting the chest, draw the belly in. Let it go. Separate your legs like a little tree. So this is my bad side. So what, what's gonna happen is the hand goes behind you. You're gonna lift up and back. So I'm not gonna go into the full pose here. I'm just gonna show you like this. So my right foot will be down, my chest will lift it, and I'm going into sail. Inhale the breath, exhale, lift up and back. One more inch. Exhale that breath, lower down. So as you come all the way down to the ground, bend your legs, take your blocks with you, lay on your backs, good. So a set of bridge or wheel, or I'm gonna demonstrate supported bridge. Lift the tailbone up, slide the block underneath your low back and set up for supported bridge, bridge pose or full wheel. If you're going to full wheel, flip your palms, bring your chin to your chest, take a giant breath in and on your exhale, you lift. Stay in a variation that you can hold for 10 breaths, feet forward, Thighs lifted, tailbone lifting. Five more. One more big breath in. On your next exhale breath, start to come out. So as you come slowly out of the pose, lower your tailbone slow, and then hug your knees in towards your chest. Reach down, grab the blades of your feet for happy baby, pull the knees down around your rib cage. Broaden the shoulder blades, lengthen the low back, look up towards the sky. Hug your knees to your chest, draw your eyeballs in, reach your arms forward like you're a cannonball going into a pool, hug in really, really tight. As you release out, hover everything from the ground. Arms can go way back, they can go up, they can go forward, an Ardha Navasana as you hold. Look up with your eyes so you're not jamming into your lower back. Lift a little higher. Exhale your breath, Shavasana, complete rest. Let your eyes close, turn your palms open, and just melt. Be still.
If you feel the need to stay longer, please do. If not, take a giant breath in. Exhale fully and completely. Arms reach up over the top of the head. Hug your knees in, squeeze them tight. Rock up in whatever way you wish to a seat. Sit up tall. Let the shoulders draw down the back and just feel the effects of this afternoon. This was an afternoon practice. Hands to prayer. Bow your head for a moment, have closure, have gratitude. Feel complete. Lift your head, open your eyes. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. And see you next time.